Preview. Preview. Okay, what we got here, <clears throat> using Matthew Miller's um, theory about how when the Earth changes, the um, the North Pole is actually going to be at 66.33 North and 125 degrees East. With that configuration, I took that point, you know, I made a mark on it on Google Earth, and then I moved it all the way up to where that point is the North Pole. I then took the globe, which you see now, and I started moving it. Set it spinning without a wobble, because the wobble is easy to do. And this is the result. If Matthew Miller's right, by his calculations, then this is what the Earth is going to look like when the polar shift happens and the North Pole moves to was currently in Siberia. So get a good look at it, all you good people, and look at the center of the globe. That's the equator. <coughs> Excuse me. So we see that Australia is going to be right on the equator, that it moves over and it goes, the equator moves right through the Sahara, which means the Sahara probably won't be a desert anymore. And it moves right through over oh, around the Panama area. If you notice the numbers on the bottom, <coughs> if they're visible, it, the, um, the wobble, it would be a wobble now because it's going by zero degrees with the current equator, but it goes all the way up to about 22, which would be just about right because our current equator, our current um, polar um, <coughs> tilt is 23 degrees. So again, we have some more proof of um, that the Earth is going to go to a zero axis, but the zero axis is going to be different than we see today. It's not going to be uh, where the North Pole is now. So anyway, just wanted to bring this to everybody's attention and uh, well God bless you and well, well come September through November this year when that whatever it is passes by our, our beautiful little planet, uh, we'll see what happens. Anyway, thanks and God bless. Perhaps, but there is one man whose prophetic and predictive talents continue to baffle even the most hard-nosed skeptics. With his eighth grade education, he uncovered secrets of our past that no historians could have known. He predicted wars, diagnosed and cured illnesses, and saw cataclysmic changes to our planet that only scientists could have described. And he did it all in his sleep. A man named Edgar Cayce had the amazing ability to put himself in a trance and provide individuals with detailed information about virtually anything they asked about the present, the past, or the future. Edgar Casey is probably the most profoundly important clairvoyant of all time. He was clearly the most gifted psychic of, of the 20th century. He predicted the Second World War, the deaths of presidents, the future of medicine, and diagnosed illnesses in his sleep. His psychic readings, 14,306 of them, are all archived and cataloged at the Association for Research and Enlightenment in Virginia Beach, Virginia. They remain the most massive collection of psychic material collected from a single source. Edgar Casey didn't give 10, 20, 500 readings in his career. He gave 14,000. Think of a Las Vegas stage performer having to come up with a different routine twice a day, every day, for 45 years. It's just not possible. Edgar Casey gave readings about many, many different subjects. Nostradamus wasn't quite as eclectic. But like Nostradamus, Casey was very sought after in his lifetime. And like his French counterpart, he also remained humble about his ability 
Both of them were men who were deeply committed to a life of compassion and service to others. Both were very interested in health and healing. Nostradamus was a physician. Edgar Cayce was an intuitive diagnostic physician of sorts. Edgar Cayce and Nostradamus both started as healers, but later became more famous as prophets. Cayce was about to discover Edgar new, Cayce's amazing, amazing abilities. And his spine-chilling visions were about to turn him into the greatest prophet of the 20th century. Spectacular earth change predictions. Something that would be catastrophic, probably even beyond what we could imagine. Nostradamus to the Mayas. Prophets and prophetic traditions the world over warn of cataclysmic earth changes that will soon be upon us. The ancient Mayans had a sense that there would come a time, about in these times in which we're living now, that would include tremendous destruction. They speak about the day of the withered fruit and the great tempest, things that sound rather scary. The Hopi speak of trees dying and dramatic changes in the weather that will bring in the great day of purification. Nostradamus speaks of the dead rising from their grave. And Prophet Mother Shipton warns, Storms shall rage and oceans roar, old worlds shall die and new be born. As for Casey's predictions for the new millennium, they are as dire as all the other prophets before him. Edgar Casey made some extraordinary and spectacular earth change predictions. Probably the biggest one was that the rotational axis of the earth would change. And that's something that would be catastrophic, probably even beyond what we could imagine if that took place literally. If the tilt axis of the earth shifted slightly, the entire mass of the earth would have to reconfigure itself. It would shift ocean basins, it would shift where valleys are, where mountains are. Some of Casey's visions of that future were truly terrifying. He speaks of Japan going into the ocean, inundations for southeastern United States, perhaps in a very slow way, but a permanent kind of inundation. Casey also warned the East Coast would not be spared. Portions of the now East Coast of New York, or New York City itself, will in the main disappear. This will be another generation, though, here, while the southern portions of Carolina, Georgia, these will disappear. This will be much sooner. He also suggests that Europe would change either geologically or climatologically in the twinkling of an eye. Casey actually foresaw these um, as part of the shifting of the poles. And he stated that the Great Lakes would flow down through the Mississippi Valley system and from there flow right into the Gulf. Amazingly, Casey, who knew nothing about plate tectonics, said signs within the Earth would warn us of this coming pole shift. The most dramatic predictions that Edgar Casey made is that there would be the onset of major Earth changes that would escalate in activity from 1958 on through uh, 1998. From that period on, these trends, they would escalate again, then we would know that the pole shift was coming. There will be the upheavals in the Arctic and in the Antarctic that will make for the eruption of volcanoes in the torrid areas, and this will begin in those periods in 58 to 98. Volcanic activity events are increasing. The torrid zone activity has increased along with general world increase by something like 500% in the last 50 years. Casey also predicted a surge in violent storms and earthquakes in this period. In the last 10 years, hurricane activity in the Atlantic has been at its highest, and an increasing number of earthquakes are being detected around the globe. And in 1999, German researchers measured more than 200 earthquakes in a period of seven months above the Arctic Circle. Are Casey, Shipton, Nostradamus, and the Maya and Hopis before them reading from the same book of prophecy? People from different cultures seem to have been able to tune into a kind of universal mind. That same level that Nostradamus and Edgar Casey seem to have been able to tune into also. Is the world as we know it about to end? Some disaster with our skies, with our crops, with our rising oceans, they all can basically agree on that. They may emphasize one aspect more than others, but they all share the fact that we are entering a period of evolutionary crisis. So many different prophetic traditions have talked about times of destruction. 
times of dire cataclysm, death, devastation. And more than anything, those predictions are a wake-up call for all of us as individuals, as a nation, as a world, to look at our relationship to the earth, to nature, and to our relationship with each other. As dire as his earth prophecies appear, Casey believed in living in the present. He also believed, like Nostradamus and other prophets before him, that we have a hand in how the future will unfold. Still, in 1939, just as Casey had predicted, a second world war broke out. And in 1941, as America became entangled in the conflict, more and more people wrote or came to him asking about the fate of loved ones who were fighting abroad. Edgar, in his own readings, was reminded to give not more than two a day, one in the morning and one in the afternoon, because each psychic reading was emotionally draining to a system. Well, Edgar Casey could not say no to people, and that ultimately brought his downfall, because by the summer of 1944, he was giving seven and eight readings a day. In September of 1944, fatigued and depleted, Edgar Casey suffered a stroke. He died on January 3rd, 1945, in Virginia Beach. He's buried in his hometown of Hopkinsville, Kentucky. Outside the cemetery, a bronze plaque stands as a testament to his work. But to many, he was more than just a great prophet. Relegating Edgar Casey to the place of someone who simply predicted the future makes Edgar Casey an event. And in my opinion, the material is so helpful, so valuable, that it's much more a source of information that help people in the here and now. He isn't any one thing. That is, you can't stick him in a box and label it mystic. You can't stick him in a box and label him psychic. You can't stick him in a box and label him prophet. At the end of the day, Edgar Cayce's readings are not about whether he was right or wrong about Egyptian or Atlantean history, or whether there even was that kind of history. I think at the end of the day, what matters is that he helps us to better understand who we are and why we're here. Today, the Casey materials continue to provide insights into most every subject under the sun. Whatever he did and however he did it, Casey, like all the great seers before him, left behind a vision of what our future could be. Whether that future unfolds remains to be seen. <laughs>